So in real estate circles, I've been accused of being a drama queen. And that's because I talk about the housing market and what I see is going to be happening down the road. Is it gonna be happening this week? Absolutely not. So real estate agents think I'm fear mongering when I'm talking about the impending housing crisis. Once you've lived through one housing crisis, you can tend to see the storm clouds in the distance. I know it might seem like I'm being dramatic, but I've seen a lot of people lose a lot of money over that period of time and, and it makes me nervous. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the storm clouds that I see. So that way you can let me know if you think I'm being a drama queen or not at the end of the video. The National Association of Realtors reported the worst month to month drop in existing home sales since they started keeping track in the late 90s. So a lot of real estate agents like to compare the two markets that happened the previous housing crash and what we're seeing now. And of course, their first thing to say is, well, there's definitely not going to be a crash because what we saw in 2006, 2007, 2008, and almost 10 years afterwards was a sea of people that had really crummy interest only loans that allowed them to buy more house than they could possibly afford. When that balloon payment came uh, due, of course they couldn't pay it and they had no skin in the game because they put no down payment and they walked away from their homes, causing a foreclosure tsunami throughout many housing markets, including Florida, California, even New York. Nobody was talking about it at the beginning. They were saying, oh, it's gonna be fine. You know, there's only a few people that have the few of these loans and it's much like what's going on now it all going to be it's all going to be fine there's only a few people in forbearance well there's a lot more people in forbearance and there's more to come. Black Knight reports 24% of active forbearance scheduled to end in March when more than 600,000 homeowners face 12 month expirations. Nearly 3.6 million 90 day defaults occurred in 2020. That's the largest number since 2009 with 2.1 million homeowners currently seriously delinquent on their mortgage payments. Now let's talk about the people that have taken the forbearance. Some mortgage companies, if they're not FHA or government backed loans, they have something called a conventional loan. And yes, their mortgage servicer offered them a forbearance, but they didn't have to follow the same kind of rules that were offered to the people that have federally backed loans. Um, a lot of mortgage companies do, went ahead and did the same thing as all the other ones, but conventional loans don't have to follow those rules. And I've heard many people, I've gotten a lot of emails recently that they were told that after the three months of forbearance that they took, they actually had to pay the whole amount of forbearance. Not only that, they had to pay all the escrows that they missed for those three months as well. So now they've gotten their new mortgage payment saying that not only did their poor mortgage payment go up in price, they had to pay the three months that they didn't pay and they have to pay the, um, the shortage that they had in their escrow accounts. Is it going to cause a problem in 2021? Only time will tell. CoreLogic predicts serious delinquencies could double again by early 2022, which could seriously hurt home prices and home equity. You're waiting for this wave of foreclosures. Certainly it doesn't look like that's gonna happen. Why? Because of the fact that the government has allowed for these people to go ahead and take the forbearance for an additional year. So all the way through 2021, if you need to forego your mortgage payments, you're gonna go ahead and be able to do that. Um, this is just gonna kick the can down a little bit further down the road. I wasn't too sure that they were gonna extend that. It didn't seem to me that the banks would even allow for that to happen. But if you have a conventional loan, it's possible that they're not gonna let you do that all the way through 2021. Another storm cloud in the distance that most people aren't talking about is um, escrows. So whenever you have a mortgage, you have most people don't pay their escrows separately. They go ahead and they have it rolled into their house payment. So you could have a payment, let's just say it's $1,000 for the mortgage and it's an additional $350 for taxes and insurance. So if you take your forbearance, you're also pausing escrow payments. Let's just say you took six months off of paying your mortgage. Then you also have six months worth of escrows that you haven't paid as well. So when they recalculate your new payment for the next year, you're gonna have to make up for missing escrows for your insurance and for your uh, taxes. And it may increase that payment even more because of the fact that in many neighborhoods, especially first time home buyer neighborhoods, those houses have increased in price, sometimes 20, 30, $40,000 over the original price that they were even a year ago. So people's payments are gonna be a lot higher going into 2022. 
um, this is one of those things that people are going to have to start thinking about because if people are on a tight budget and this was like this was the payment that they were expecting to pay for at least a good five years and now it's increased let's just say another additional three hundred and fifty dollars that it hadn't been years previous that's a lot of money that's a lot of money to a lot of people so 2021 are we going to see it no 2022 it looks like uh it could be a hardship for a lot of people this is another rumbling in the distance where you hear the thunder because what determines a healthy housing market is first-time buyers getting into the market and this year this past year had the worst amount of first-time home buyers now let's just talk about the people that are trying to buy a home the buying frenzy throughout the country is absolutely ridiculous to the point where I feel extremely sorry for people that are trying to purchase their first home. And I've even heard people cashing out their 401ks and going ahead and purchasing a home, which it was fine during the CARES Act. People could take or borrow money from the CARES Act during that time from your 401k without a penalty. But now they're still doing it and there's penalties involved. That, that is an investment in your future. Definitely check with your financial advisor to make you know, sure this is a good financial decision for you. But when I have a first time home buyer that's willing to take the penalty just to be able to buy their first home, that makes me extremely nervous because I haven't seen stuff like this since you know, 2006, 2007. The buying frenzy is really great for a lot of real estate agents. To me, it breaks my heart. I don't want anybody to overpay for a property that I know five years from now is going to be a lot less and that, you know, I'm going to have to have those hard conversations with them that, yes, you bought your house then and you paid all this extra money over asking price, but now it's completely lost. That is the worst conversation to have with somebody. And if you haven't been through this before as a real estate agent, trust me, it's one you never want to have again. Unfortunately, it seems with even the most recent bills that have come into play that it's still not going to help people that are renting the land underneath their manufactured homes. They still have not offered any kind of reprieve to those people that are renting the land and have something called a chat alone. Now I did get a letter from somebody that said that their chat alone company did work with them to be able to put their payment at the end of their mortgage. They had to send in their pay stubs, uh, proof that they were out of work and uh, a hardship letter that, you know, they had to basically prove the fact that they weren't able to pay at this time. And then their chat alone company went ahead and put those payments at the end. They didn't, um, I asked them how much the interest extra they had to pay or if there was any changes to the loan, they said they didn't know and they were gonna get back to me. I haven't heard back. So um, that is something if you are in that situation, you may wanna reach out to your um, chattel loan mortgage servicer and see if maybe they would work with you. Claims are setting new records. The number of people seeking first time aid hit 965,000 people last week according to the new jobs report out today. That's the highest weekly total since August. Here's another indicator that a lot of real estate agents say, well, we have nothing to worry about because of the unemployment numbers only affect people that are renting a house. You mean to tell me that just the people that rent houses are the ones that are currently unemployed? Give me a break. A lot of people are two income families. Some of them have gone down to one income and those people are the ones that have either had to take off of their work because they had to take care of kids or they're the ones that actually were laid off from their job. In some states have had their uh, unemployment benefits run out and now they have no income. So they've taken forbearance so that way they could live off that one income. And let's be honest, the $600 that we just recently got is not gonna help somebody that is that behind on payments and had to go down to one income. There's a lot of people that are in a lot of trouble right now. Not only are they renting, they're ones that own homes too. The unemployment numbers aren't getting any better. So I don't, that's, that I, I can't see that as just being people that rent a house. Stop saying that. Realtors, stop saying that. Experts, stop saying that. In 2005, 2006, this guy was predicting the housing market and they flat out told him that he was insane. It took us almost 10 years to get out of that housing recession. I'm sorry, the housing market is going to be a mess and we're not gonna see it until many, many, many months down the road. 
We have investors that have basically not been paid because their renters haven't been paying their payments because they had the moratorium on rent. We have home buyers that are literally cashing out their 401ks to purchase a home. We have record amount of people still unemployed. We have people that haven't been able to make their mortgage payments and make their escrows. And there has been no clear indication how mortgage companies are going to be taking care of that. If this is all being dramatic, then so be it. I am a dramatic real estate channel, but I would be a terrible person to not inform you of these things that could be possibly happening down the road and give you the warning of the storm in the distance. So that way you can make a good wise decision. And to make another good wise decision, you can watch my other videos about the real estate market over here. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer. And I tell you all this because good real estate information matters.